Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. So in today's video, it's a little bit different, but we are doing another Tumblr tutorial, but we are not doing an epoxy Tumblr. So we are going to get into sublimation today. So sublimation, although is kind of all of the rave right now, is something that is kind of new for me and something that I've just started. So I thought that I would share with you guys kind of my own tips and tricks and things that I have learned since beginning sublimation. And we're just going to start with a basic Tumblr. Tumblr. So the design that I use for today's video is one that is available in my digital shop, which you certainly can find down below in the description box, as well as all the other products that I use in today's video. But I want to show you guys, you know, how to sublimate a Tumblr, kind of the step-by-step -step process with, you know, wrapping the Tumblr and getting it pressed and all the things that I've kind of learned to do and what not to do when I'm sublimating Tumblrs. So of course, if you really do enjoy the area of sublimation and you'd like to see other things on my channel, be sure to comment down below and let me know what things you'd love to see me try sublimating on or what are some things that you'd like me to talk about with regards to sublimation. I'd love to bring those things to the channel and kind of talk about some of those things that maybe you guys are looking to get into so you can figure out this is a venture that you want to take for yourself as well. So of course, everything I use will be listed and linked down in the description box. But before you go, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you are notified when I post all of my videos on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's sublimation tutorial. Okay, so jumping right into the sublimation game here, here are some of the things that you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need, which is not currently pictured, is a sublimation printer. So this can be a sublimation printer or it can be a converted printer. I currently use an EcoTank 2720, and so a lot of the EcoTanks are very easily able to be converted to sublimation. Some other things you'll need, of course, are sublimation ink. I get the Hippo sublimation ink, and then some sort of sublimation paper. There are lots of variations on Amazon. I have a sub paper. You'll need sublimation tumblers, of course. And lastly, you will definitely need to make sure that you need heat tape. Additionally, outside of these items that are here on the screen, you'll also need some sort of heating element, whether that's a tumbler press or a convection oven in order to be able to press your sublimation and get your sublimation tumblers, you know, pressed the image pressed to them. And of course, a set of heat gloves because we need to protect those fingertips from all those burns. So these are the designs that we're going to be using today. I'm using the sublimation files from both of these, these designs. This is a digital bundle. Both are available in my digital shop and I will link those down in the description box. So I've already gone ahead and printed my images. Of course, mirrored. You'll want to make sure your image is mirrored. I've already printed these on my sublimation printer and we're going to go ahead and do the first thing we would do. Even if we were doing a vinyl wrapped tumbler, we're going to trim off all of that white excess. Now you certainly can use a paper cutter if that is what you choose to do. I just would much rather get a close cut with a pair of scissors to kind of save me the hassle of having to go back and cut any additional excess paper that doesn't need to be on the print. So we're of course going to cut all the edges off of the edge of our sublimation prints. That way we get a real nice fit to our cup. So the size for the sublimation for 20 ounce tumblers is 9.3 inches wide by 8.2 in height. And so you have to remember too that all sublimation tumblers, like 20 ounce tumblers in general, they sometimes vary depending on where you buy them from, what vendor you buy them from. So the general sizing is 9.3 by 8.2, but of course that might vary slightly. So make sure to measure your tumbler first before you proceed with printing the sublimation image to size to be sized to fit your cup. So now that we have those images cut, we're going to go ahead and grab our sublimation tumblers. So the one thing that's really nice about sublimation is I don't have to do any prep work whatsoever with the cups when I take them out of the package. Literally, I'm just going to take them out of the protective covering they come with and take the lids off. And that's all I'll have to do. There's no prepping involved in needing to sort of prep or do anything to the base of your cup before you get started on adding your images to your sublimation tumbler. So we're going to go ahead and place the image on our tumbler. Make sure that you don't place it upside down. I'm saying this because if you guys remember my last video a couple of weeks ago, I reused the sublimation tumbler that I placed the image on upside down. So 
always remember to make sure your image is mirrored, of course, but also make sure that when you're applying it to the cup that you're not accidentally placing it so that the image looks upside down. I've done that now two or three times, <laughs> so I've gotten quite a few oopsie cups starting in my collection there. So we're gonna go ahead and sort of line that up just like we would with vinyl, and we're gonna make sure that our edges meet at the top and at the bottom, and then we're going to kind of pinch that edge closed and then add our heat tape. So I'm what I would say probably an over taper. I may probably don't need as much tape as I apply to these, but I'd rather be safe rather than sorry, um, because without having enough tape, you can sometimes run into what is ghosting on your tumblers, meaning that there wasn't enough heat or there wasn't enough pressure around the image and your cup to allow the ink from the paper to thoroughly press in those sections. So it kind of looks like when you are running out of ink on your print in your printer and you print a sheet of paper and there's kind of like some areas that don't have full color, that's what that ghosting looks like on your cup. After we've gotten the seam, of course, taped off, we're gonna go ahead and secure the top and bottom to make sure we get real firm pressure on those areas as well. And then we'll proceed to tape off the other cup next. So when I show you this cup right here that I'm going to tape off next, I am using another tool that I've seen around. And so I purchased one to see if it was something that I would be helpful to me. This is like a pinch tool. Um, it essentially is a tool that's supposed to help you get a really tight fit of your image onto the cup and help you with the taping process. I still feel like I'm pretty awkward with using it. I haven't really gotten the hang of it down yet. And I find that when I'm just using my hands, I'm a little bit more successful and not so awkward as I'm trying to like place this on the cup and keep the paper from like wrinkling or getting kind of squished under that pinch tool. But this is another tool if you're someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of you know strength in your hands or something that might be another tool that might be helpful to you when sublimating so once i've gotten a few pieces of tape i go ahead and remove that you know pinch pinch tool there just to be able to thoroughly tape the rest of the seam then we'll go ahead and put another line of tape down the center of the seam there to keep that kind of straight and then we'll proceed with the top and bottom. The other thing that I have picked up since the recording of this video is because there is a slight overlap with the measurement of the sublimation images for a 20 ounce, sometimes you'll get sort of a right along the seam, like a darker seam area. And so to prevent that, what I have started to do, and I didn't do that as the filming of, as the filming of this video, is I put a piece of tape on the white section, the back half, of the uh, print on one side. And that just helps to make sure that I don't get any over uh, ink press into that seamed area. So now, of course, we're gonna get ready to get this pressed. So I'm using my Hog DIY Series 20, or Tumblr press, um, and we are setting that to 350 degrees for 80 seconds. So we're gonna press two times. We're gonna let, of course, our press heat up and get to full temperature before we place our cup in the actual press. So I always press with the seam down first. It's just a great memory for me to always do this in the same fashion. So I'll press the cup, making sure that the seamed section is straight down, and then, once this is gotten its first 80 second press, I'll then do a 180 flip and make sure that the seam side is directly up, sort of where the pinched area of where the tumbler press closes in order to do that second press there. So I'm gonna show you the whole process of me pressing this, no cuts here really whatsoever, um, just to show you that, you know, really they are quick and easy to do. I've been having a lot of fun with sublimation as of late, just being able to try out different designs, really being able to utilize some of the patterns that I create for digital files too as sublimation files has been a lot of fun as well. To be able to see like all of that work that I do digitally, be able to be directly on a cup as well. Now this definitely doesn't take away from what I love to do with glitter and epoxy, don't get me wrong, but I have also been able to 
use sublimation for some of my larger tumblers and be able to still incorporate glitter and epoxy into those designs. Just having sort of that cut pressed without having to worry about printing like a water slide or a printable vinyl, um, or maybe I find a design that I really like, I can just sublimate that onto the cup and then press that and kind of go about the design that I wish to for the rest of sort of the aesthetic that I'm looking for that cup. So I've already pressed the second cup. We just did a quick speed session of that, of course, and I've let my cups cool. So they do take a little bit of time to cool. Some people do choose to put them or like dunk them in water, which helps to cool down the cup a little faster. I have not really found the need for that right now, um, but that is certainly something that you could try out and let me know how that goes and how that works for you. But once I've let them cool, we're going to go ahead and, of course, remove all the tape that I've applied to each of these sublimation cups and see how the final press of the cup turned out. So this is the uh, book tumbler design for sublimation that I created. And so I'm already loving how beautifully everything pressed. And I'm just doing like my final check to make sure that I didn't get any ghosting, that there isn't anything weird on my cup um, that happened during the pressing process and making sure that everything looks good. We'll now go ahead and move on to the second cup that I pressed, which was that fall vibes design that I had printed for today's video. And so same process, just removing all of that tape. Obviously, if you're not an over taper like me, this will take be much easier to get to the reveal part, but <laughs> I'd rather be safe than sorry. But we're gonna go ahead and reveal this one. This one came out really good as well. I'm also gonna show you all of that ink release off of that paper. And I'm showing you that for the sheer fact of, you're gonna know if you have a really good press if most of your ink is released off of that paper. If you still see a lot of ink on that paper, then maybe you need to check the settings of your tumbler press or potentially even maybe the settings of how you are printing your sublimation prints. So that is kind of it for today's video. I know that it was kind of, you know, another video that wasn't extremely long or really in depth, but I really am just getting into the sublimation process. And so I want to take you guys kind of along that journey, as I mentioned in the introduction of today's video. So if you have things you'd like to see me sublimate or other ideas, I want to be able to take sublimation sort of to the new level and kind of incorporate it into a lot of what I already do. So stay tuned for that, but leave me any comments down below on anything you'd love to see on the channel. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.